I will biopsy the tumor. I mean, maybe it's something different than everybody thinks it is. So I took him to the operating room, opened up the head, went down to the area of the brainstem, this big, ugly, grayish red mask. I took a piece of it, sent it to pathology. It came back highly malignant, aggressive tumor. I said, well, as long as we're here, let's just debulk it. Let's take as much as we can until we started running across vital things and we stopped, closed it up. I went out to speak to the family, and, you know, like we always tell people, you know, only the Lord knows the beginning from the end, and we'll understand it better by and by, and I'm sorry, but, you know, maybe he's already had the impact that he's supposed to have, even though he's only four years old. And they said, thank you, doctor, but the Lord. <laughs> and, you know, as I, as I walked away, I just marveled at people who had that kind of faith fully expecting that that boy would continue to deteriorate and die. But over the next few days, his eyes became conjugate, started looking in the same direction. He started handling secretions. And I said, what's going on? I said, maybe we should do another MRI. And we did. And it was still a big, ugly tumor there, but you could see a little ribbon of tissue way off on the edge. And I said, is it possible that maybe the tumor was just compressing the brainstem and it wasn't really in the brainstem? And I said to the parents, maybe we should go back in. And they said, by all means. And, uh, you know, I went back in there and started peeling that tumor ray layer by layer under the microscope. And when I got to the last layer of tumor, there was a glistening white brain stem, intact, compressed and distorted, but intact. And over the next few weeks, he continued to improve, and that boy walked out of the hospital. And, um, you know, today he is a minister. And, uh, you know, that family, every Christmas they send a large amount of money to the hospital for us to donate to a needy family. But, um, you know, one of the oncologists came to me after that case. He said, Ben, I've always been an atheist, but I'm a believer now. And, you know, one of the things that I learned through that, I thought I was pretty good, you know. I, you know, I'd gone to Yale, University of Michigan. I was chief of pediatric neurosurgery at the number one hospital at age 33. I thought I was pretty good. But after that, I realized it wasn't me at all. It was the Lord. And, and that's when I said, Lord, you be the neurosurgeon, I'll be the hands. And all kinds of things began to happen at that point. And the impact that you know, I've been able to have much greater than if I had become a missionary doctor. So what that says is no matter what you decide to do, remember who is in charge. It is the Lord. Thank you.